a big smell and most of it is vanilla and caramel. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today I have a whiskey here on my cask, a blended Scotch whiskey and it's called Loch Ness. And there is a fisherman in his small boat uh, catching a fish and on top of him is the monster. Uh, well, is there a monster in Loch Ness? <clears throat> I doubt. Uh, if you drink this bottle, some people will see white mice and some will see monsters. So Loch Ness might be the right name for this whiskey. Otherwise, it's pure marketing. It's blur. Um, so this bottle might be put on the shelves of the tourist shops along Loch Ness. And if the, the bus stops and all the, the passengers pouring in and they say, oh, well, I take it with me for my aunt. And, my uncle and whoever. Yeah, and then there is said five year old, and this is one something really special. Whenever you have a cheap blend, and this one is slightly above twenty. Um, if you have a cheap blend, then uh, you omit the age, and those people add the five to the age. This is wonderful telling us that's a little bit more than the typical three years and a day. And uh, well, they do not write the, the, the figure five because it's just one digit. Uh, no, uh, they write it in letters, five years. <clears throat> um, and then uh, there's the manufacturers, the original Loch Ness Whiskey Company Limited. Has there been a whiskey distillery at Loch Ness? Mm, no, not really. Probably some, some illegal distilling two centuries ago, but there hadn't been any <laughs> official distillery. So this is just marketing. And then there's the address, Huntley, Scotland. And then mm, my brain started to work. Huntley, I know that. There's a distillery close by. And yeah, there's an independent bottler in Huntley. It's the Duncan Taylor company, and they really know how to bottle whiskey. Uh, they had 10, 15 years ago, the Ape Rosenberg collection called the Peerless Collection. And there they bottled an awful lot of casks for really a big money. Um, and those were really peerless, those bottles, wonderful. Uh, on the back they say, Loch Ness is an enchanted place found in the ancient highlands in the historic north of Scotland. Generation after generation has grown up with the legend of the monster through uh, thought to inhabit the cold depth of the loch. Uh, it's a sweet water loch. It's quite deep, I think, 200 meters, 600 feet. There are said to have been several sightings during the last hundred years and there has from time to time been inconclusive photographic evidence. Mm. Yeah. The first sighting of the monster to be recorded in the local press as reported by the Inverness Courier in 1868 describes it as a huge fish. So it was written in the newspaper. It has to be true. Yeah. Uh -huh. Indeed, a monstrous good blend. And for slightly above 20 euros, you get a cork. A real cork. And this is something special. So first you get five years instead of three and you get a cork instead of a screw cap. So this shows that it might be better than the average of cheap blends. <clears throat> a big smell and most of it is vanilla and caramel and some, well, darker, more mature aromas. It's like tobacco, not burnt tobacco, but tobacco from a, a cigar box, from a tobacco, a pipe tobacco tin. So uh, I'm a little bit allergic against poles and uh, whenever uh, I smell uh, the smoke of a cigar or cigarettes, uh, all my nose is, is going berserk and uh, so I avoid uh, 
being exposed to smoke at all. Um, but I like to, to smell at, at open uh, cigar boxes or pipe tobacco tins. They have wonderful smells in it. As the fermented teas. Uh, my son had been to India. There are some videos about the, the Indian whiskey industry from him here on my channel, uh, or our channel. And uh, he brought a lot of different teas with him. So wonderful smells in those teas. Yeah, some citrus fruits must be the distillery. And going over to Okiness. Yeah. A really complex smell for a cheap blend. So there is some alcohol all still tasteable. So it's only 40% ABV, so the, the intensity of the uh, aroma is not that big. Yeah, oak is kicking in, mm -hmm. intense, um, and there's typically uh, a specialty of the grain. It's an oiliness of grain. I would like to describe it. So uh, this is typical to grain whiskey, and uh, grain whiskey is most often matured in just cask available. So when they store it for three years and a day, and then they refill it with fresh, uh, raw whiskey and then they go for another three years and this goes on and goes on ten times until 30 years are over and then the casks are, are dumped um, and the last three fillings uh, you just have bitter tannins uh, in this uh, light and smooth grain whiskey uh, highly distilled on uh, column stills um, so that you add a lot of bitterness to a whiskey with these uh, cheap grain casks. And this one is different. This one has no bitterness at all. There is this uh, grain, oiliness of the grain and the maltiness. The aftertaste is not really long, no. You can't uh, uh, ask for that in, in such a cheap whiskey. But there's a lot of vanilla and caramel in it, so there had been some very active casks and probably some exotic fruit like like pineapple or yeah yeah so this one is a good blend far better than average highly recommended yes indeed Thank you for watching, stay tuned, there's more to come as always and feel free to share this video with your friends and please give your comments in our forum or in our whiskey database on whiskey.com.